I am uh, tonight with uh, Rob Alaya from Australia, and I am here with Rob Fox from Ireland. Uh, and we are here in Cyprus. Uh, we are going to, these gentlemen are going to explain to us why we are here in Cyprus and we are meeting in Cyprus. That we have a lot to talk about. I'm uh, extremely proud and very happy to meet you because, as I said before, you were, you are on my target uh, list of uh, people for me who really influence um, the uh, first Cuban cigar market, but the cigar market in general. You have an, an extremely good knowledge. Uh, because you've been s both selling cigars different ways, uh, brick and mortar shop and online. And um, my first question will go to uh, Rob. Uh, so Rob, could you uh, kindly introduce yourself and explain how you know you came into this business and what uh, what is bringing us here to tonight? No, oh, it's an absolute pleasure, Laurent. Um, well, how I got into the business. I started in 95 and a commercial banker by training and trying certainly a, a, a different path in life where you can work for yourself. I started that beautiful route of, uh, of parallel importing and uh, effectively as a cigar pirate and parallel importing into Australia and, and in short I became such a pain in the bum to the distributors that PCC and I came to an agreement in 2002, and from 2002 on, uh, I've been buying exclusively from PCC, all cigars, all Cuban cigars, at least. We have, we have uh, developed probably the, the, certainly the largest cigar forum in the world in, in Friends of El Habano. We have, I met this lovely gentleman, I met Foxy in, in Havana. We're going back in mid 2000s, late 2000s. Uh, and of course we met at a bar and, and we've we got on like a house on fire and we always wanted to get together and do something and, and our first venture together was of course uh, Bon Robert Cigar Auctions and that was something we didn't know was going to be the success that it is today and we, we have been now, is it six years on, on yep. Bon Robert Cigar Auctions and we've got our new website coming out, the updated website coming out a little bit later on this year. From there we, we've seen so many changes in the cigar world of recent times in the last few years. I have been making cigars for our forum members uh, on Friends of El Habano, but we saw the opportunity to take not necessarily advantage of the current, uh, the current crux in Cuban cigars, the, one of the shortages and secondly the prices, we saw the opportunity to fill a hole that is there for lovers of Cuban cigars who require something that's a little bit more accessible, accessible quality, accessible smoking experience when it comes to Cuban cigars. That's how I'd put it, Foxy, in, in, in a very short period of time. So your story started like an Irish joke. There was an Irish man and an Australian man in a pub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is how it usually it doesn't end up very well, but this time the story yes. seems to be going very well. It's going extremely well. Yeah. Um, so you are Rob Fox yes. from the JJ Fox uh, yes. family business, shall we That's say? Right. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm fifth generation. Um, we have cigar stores in Dublin and in London, um, and our business is different. Uh, Rob's business is based on a forum and, and internet sales, online sales, Correct. whereas our, our business is, is old-fashioned retailing. Yeah, I'm surprised you even talk to each other in the shop, because usually brick-and-mortar people don't really look at people, especially at that time where you were working on the parallel market, you know? It's like, you know, Catholic and Protestants, you know? They, <laughs> yes. yeah. they don't really talk to each other. But, I mean, it was in a pub, it was in a bar in Havana, so we, I think... Uh, we have a very different um, view on, 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 on what compet competition means. Um, I, can't, I can't do what he does, and he can't do what I do. Um, so it's a case of, you know, but we can actually collaborate with each other and do something new and do something different. And at the time, 
Rob was uh, uh, on Friends of Habanos, Rob was running a, a, a program where he was picking out a top quality boxes. So higher value boxes uh, or higher quality boxes. Um, his, it was a HQ program where he'd get, uh, each box would get a, a, a kind of a seal of approval from Rob. And we at the time were selling, we were selling a lot of vintage cigars because we, we store cigars on behalf of our clients. Um, and from occasionally we'll be in a position to buy those cigars back and offer them to the market for sale. So we both realized that the, 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 the most collectible cigars weren't actually in shops at all. They weren't on shelf. They're in people's private collections. So we set up Bond Roberts to allow collectors access to each other's cigar collections. And that's what that was. We, it, it, it was, it was, it was, it, it had a bit of old school retailing. It has a lot of online. Um, so our, our skill sets, our, our experiences came together to, to, to work perfectly on that front. We couldn't, I don't think we could have either have done it on our own. We, but, 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 but by working together, we were able to, to make it happen. Bon Roberts is an Australian company? It is, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, officially, you don't, you're don't. you just an IT company. You, you put people together and you don't sell cigars. And this is not a... What is it? Uh, it's a platform. It's a platform, yeah. Okay, it's a platform. It sells a service. It sells a service, yeah. Okay. yeah. So six years, I guess, Bond and Roberts, you know, with an S, so you're the, the two Roberts. Bond between two Roberts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. That's, yeah. A, that's, uh, that's the name explained. Um, I would like to talk to you about a sore subject for all of us Cuban cigar aficionados, which is uh, what happened to the Cuban cigar market, you know, uh, scarcity of products, price increase. Um, everybody, you as, a, as an intermediary, um, uh, because you're buying from a distributor and then you're selling to a customer, so of course you had to absorb all the and especially also in the forum um, that you have, Rob, uh, you had to uh, notice or listen to the your clients, sometimes clients of a long time. I mean, I know that Winston Churchill was a client of your of your shop uh, during, uh, I mean, uh, in the 20th century. So clients came back. Uh, and they were complaining about uh, the different prices because not everybody is a millionaire that smokes Cuban cigars. So, um, you can you tell us about your your decision to make a, a, this this cigars and how it came about? Uh, I guess it takes years to uh, to put together. You know, from designing from the you know designing the box, choosing yeah, the blend. It's, it's a long it's a long project. I think it can be done quickly, but it can't be done properly if you do it quickly. You need to do it yeah. correct. Um, we, the Bond Robert cigar has been blended by Hamlet, a very good friend of ours, um, to meet the palate of, the, of our clients who are Cuban cigar smokers. Um, I think most uh, cigar producers from Nicaragua, Dominican Republic and Honduras make cigars for the American market, which is very understandable. It's one of the biggest markets in the world and it's right there. But our clients are, are slightly, they, they have a much bigger um, tradition of smoking Cuban cigars. So they're so the palettes are different. Yes. So we blended the, the Bond Roberts Petit 109 and 109 to meet the palette of the Cuban cigar smoker. So it's more um, it's it's not the same sort of spicy character or peppery character that you would see in a in a Nicaraguan Puro. And it's got a bit more um, uh, depth of flavor and complexity. Um, and evolution as we go through this, as we go through the thirds. Um, similarly, the construction; these are uh, quite a lot heavier uh, cigars than their um, than the uh, other brands at the same uh, same sizes, um, because that's the Cuban style that we that we like. That it's uh, that they're they're well filled, but with excellent draw. So, so uh, Hamlet has been working with Oscar Valladares down in Honduras um, on this project for uh, the last um, two years, basically. Over two years. Yeah. Um, and this is the, 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 we launched the Petit 109 in Miami uh, in May. 
and this evening in in Cyprus we're we're launching the uh, the 109. Um, so having, having launched it, excuse me, Jesus, having launched it um, officially in, in, a, in our store in, in St. James Street on last Tuesday, which was a oh, super yeah. success. So we are here in Cyprus. Why Cyprus? One, we have some very, very good clients uh, and good people yeah. in Limassol specifically who are Bon Roberts auction um, supporters ah, and buyers. Okay, okay, okay. Hence that. And we were invited uh, to come here to, to do this. And it, it doesn't take much of an invitation to get us to go somewhere. <laughs> we, well, lo we love it. It's it's nice I was going to gonna say, Laurent, cigar people are good people. And I think it's important, especially Cuban cigar people, with all the changes that have gone on recent times, to engage with them, to, uh, to spend time with them, to get their feedback. Because we need to have their feedback. We need to understand what they're looking for in the years going forward if we're going to deliver something that makes that changes the need moves the needle that makes sense that they're going to love uh, so yeah Hong Kong was a, a brilliant launch London was a brilliant launch Limassol tonight is going to be a, a brilliant launch as well there, there is a culture among cigar smokers that we want to see things improve we want to see better cigars we want to get back to that beautiful, I'm going to use that term culture again, where we get together and share cigars, but share cigars for the right reasons, where you don't have to earn a fortune to sit down and laugh and smoke and, and share each other's experiences. Yes, I mean, it's something that, I mean, I don't know how old you guys are, but you don't seem to be much younger than me. But it's, you know, I, I was lucky to start when I was 21 and money was never a problem to smoke a Cuban cigar, even in the UK. You could buy yourself. I was smoking a Monte Cristo number four. And unfortunately now, I don't know if, if Abanos had expected it or knew what they were doing or what impact it had. I don't know if Habanos had expected so many people to be frustrated and hurt of not being able to smoke Cuban cigar, not anymore, but not the cigars they liked. I, my, you you my, have a lot of clients, so you have I, thousands, yeah, I've so got, I've you've got, had uh, feedback. I have forums, to over 26,000 active members uh, on that forum, and uh, let's, let's be honest, they were hurt, they were shocked hurt, disenfranchised, they're largely angry, and that's understandable. At the same time, I can understand the Habanos decision-making process. No supply, no stock, COVID, uh, they, had the, the, they would have been under some financial challenges sure. at the time. But with every decision you take, there's a price to pay. And the price in this, the way I see it, the price that they paid was a loss of value of their clients in terms of, how would you put that, Foxy? They, they have, you know, brand value in terms of emotional connection to the brand. Yes. For and me, I think that is the challenge. I, I, I interviewed a... Um, I interviewed a uh, a uh, university, U.S. university professor, uh, last summer, and I asked him. He's, he's, he wrote books about luxury, luxury products. What makes a product luxury, and you know the, how prices go, can go up. And I asked him. I said, Do you, "He's a Cuban cigar smoker. We've been smoking with him for a long time. He's from Belgium, actually. He teaches in the U.S." And I said. Uh, can you explain what happened? Do you see the logic? And he said, yes, it has happened many times in history in other products. When you position yourself as a luxury product, of course, you're going to hurt a lot of people on the way. Because, but you're, to maintain this, this luxury product status, you cannot move the price down. So a lot of people, I'm sure, are still hoping prices will come down. And from what I think and from what I, from this gentleman is saying, he said if they've really decided to position themselves 
Because even in the U.S., you have uh, premium cigars that cost $100. I mean, uh, Arturo Fuente, and uh, they are in this region, or Davidoff, uh, the, some Grand Cru, about $60 to $100. So if you decide to position yourself as, because you think you're better, um, and you have all the arguments to, to explain it, and you say, let's put a price. We see this in the leather bags. Mm -hmm. you, know, some, you can buy a, a Hermes bag for $100,000. Is it better than a $10,000 handbag? It does, I'm not sure. It's just that it's the status. You can show that you have an expensive... Yes, but I think Hambanos is in a, in, a, in, a, in a lucky position or in a strong position that it has multiple brands. So it has positioned Cohiba and Trinidad at that ultra-luxury level. The question still remains is what will happen the what I call commercial portfolio brands and there's still it's it's there's still it remains to be seen will they maintain because I don't think it's fair to say all of the brands have increased in price they've all increased a little bit in price oh but, yes but the brands like El Rey del Mundo um, Ramona, Monte Cristo Ramona Yones. Ramona Yones, those cigar brands offer still are are are, are, are more accessible. Yes. Um, but the question is, will they be available? And th that's the big challenge for me. I need. We need. The I, retailers I mean, need. I, I'm a Ramon Ayones, yeah. um specially selected smoker. I used to buy the 50 caps for 330 US dollars. Now I went to the shop, my Swiss shop in. Geneva, the box is 950. Okay. Okay, yeah. so I think that Patagas D4, Ramon Ayan especially selected, which is a, which are day-to-day -day cigars, which cost eight to ten dollars, are now twenty dollars. I'm yep. talking about, of course, uh, Geneva. Yep. So I think they've pro they've doubled in price in the past three to four years. Okay. I think they have increased in price, but I think there's also you know, underlying inflation there anyway. There is that, inflation, that, that, yes. that, has, that has moved sure. everything. Yeah. Um, but for me, this, the scary thing is, is, is will they be available? I, my, my favorite um, would be something like an El Rey del Mundo Chua Supreme. Very difficult to find and very short supply. And I, 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 I hope Habanas will, will recognize that they need Yes, I understand the uh, the concept of, 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 of pushing their ultra luxury pro uh, portfolio, but they have to also remain uh, pr uh, producing at the at the at the commercial portfolio level. Okay, so that's, let's that's, that's that's important for me, and I hope I think it I think it, that also makes logical sense for them to make sure they do keep that up. But that's as I say at the moment, it's very hard for me to find. Uh, some of the products. Yes, and but you know we see a lot of uh, the Linea Maestra, which is a hundred dollars uh, a stick minimum, and, and up it's one and a half thousand dollars, two thousand dollar box. Yeah. We see all the uh, uh, Linea de Oro, yep. you know all the uh, um, high end yep. um, lines yep. are out yep. in the shops. Yep. But like you, I'd like to see a Juan Lopez. You're right. We need to see those those um, secondary brands yeah. come back with yeah. volume yeah. so that at least if we cannot afford the Cohibas yeah. or the, the, the uh, Trinidad's, uh, yeah. you know, the uh, Esmeralda and, yeah. you know, the, those high-end cigars, the more expensive, at least we have something to smoke. Exactly. And where, where, where this came is, is was making sure that because it, it's not this isn't about uh, producing a product that, that someone's gonna to, 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 to switch to and smoke this only we all of our clients smoke in in rotations you know it's a, they're exploring cigars and and sometimes it'll be right for this one and sometimes it'll be right for 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 something else so it's about but but it was about making this sort of taste profile more accessible than 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 was the case I was just going to sorry. I was just going to raise a point that it is. It's probably fair to say, Laurent, that Romano Yon, especially Select D fours, that part of the the catalog was underpriced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it today, it's, where are they running? Where are they running at it? 
25, 26 dollars a cigar. So, are they are they there with the best of the the New World cigars at that price point? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think the the biggest criticism that I could make is certainly the way it didn't take its client base with them. Exactly. It, it was done in one hit. Exactly. And I think that's where that shock came. And I think you know people go through those five stages. Of, uh, of 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 dealing with crisis, and the first of that is anger, and the last one is acceptance. And I think the Cuban cigar market is finally getting to that level of acceptance. But there are there is collateral damage. I think you mentioned the Romeo and Julieta linear line. Well, good luck moving that at today's prices. Um, yes. The future of cigars like that, I think, are certainly up in the air. And another, another, another point being that, that, that people's rotations have changed. You know, the, a, the, the people are, are much more interested now in exploring what uh, is being produced in Nicaragua and in Honduras and, and, uh, and in Dominican yeah. Republic. So, we, we, yes, it's something that, is, that we've noticed. You, I mean, you certainly, because you sell Cuban and non-Cuban. Mm -hmm. no? And you sold initially only Cubans and then you moved, you're also selling non-Cubans. So. Well, I uh, manufacture non-Cubans. I uh, also manufacture. <laughs> okay. But yes, I think one of the... Obviously, we, we agree that some cigars were, I wouldn't say too cheap, but they were probably ch cheap and they had not moved in price for a long time. If you look at the cost of a cigar in the 80s, 70s, um, they had not moved with inflation. That's... Pro that's I've, I've, I looked at your bond index, but I also put some figures together and it's true that there was no readjustment so we can agree on the fact that the, the adjustment has been brutal and one of the effects were that people who would never like me looked at non look at non Cubans have had were pushed into 100%. like yeah. you know if you can't eat uh, you know, meat, uh, beef, what do you eat? You know, maybe you, you, you have to find a source of protein. So well, I spoke to a gentleman who has a tabac shop, 1970, Montreux, where the jazz festival is in Switzerland. They're going to have a Casa del Bano uh, opening in Montreux soon, before the end of the year. And he told me most of his clients moved to non-Cubans. And they were all Cuban sm cigar smokers. So it, I think that one of the effects that we've all noticed is that it's very rare to find someone who's still only looking at Cuban cigars. And as you said, so this is a, a non-Cuban cigar made for Cuban cigar lovers. Yeah. So we cannot, like for me, it's true, you smoke, uh, I light up a non-Cuban cigar and it's too, every, too much of everything. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's too sugary. It's like yeah. eating yogurt in the US. They usually put a lot of stuff inside and sugar and everything. So they love sugar They in, in the US. They, they love all those strong spices. And I'm not even talking about flavored cigars. Yeah. But yeah. And it's true that when you come with our, our background of Cuban cigars, a lot of them are very strong, too strong. And this is very delicate. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I can say about, uh, about this cigar. It's very delicate, doesn't... Uh, doesn't hurt you. I can I can understand and uh, what you're saying about the uh, the evolution because now I'm I'm getting in the second tier and it's it's uh, very enjoyable and also it's uh, it's a cigar that you can smoke all, all, uh, even during the morning for uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. you know cig people who smoke cigars in the morning. It's a light to medium uh, cigar. So yeah, I think so far I can say that you've succeeded in doing what you do. I mean, of course, I mean you uh, you were not waiting for me to tell you that, but um, I must say I was, I, I was in a David Up shop three days ago in Geneva, and I said, give me. A selection of things I don't know. We I, we talk together. He said, "Try this, try this." So I'm trying mm -hmm. because, of course, you know, it's part of the journey now to smoke uh, different things, uh, and also for me to understand. Uh, but so far, uh, even even though I think Davidoff is of all the non-Cubans, probably the ones who, because they have a Cuban past, Inherited. understand. Yeah. They they understand uh, what. Uh, the, the taste of uh, of C Cuban cigar lovers, but I think I mean I'm, I, for, so far I can tell you that you've succeeded in uh, in doing uh, what you wanted to do. Laurent, I loved your journey. Your journey is excellent. I mean, um, 
as they say, you, you, you got to kiss a lot of frogs to get a prince, yeah? And you're going through that journey at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't and finish I, and them. I, and I've, got, I've got a lot of clients exactly the same as you who would never even have thought of... They actually, even to this day, they can't come around to smoking non-Cuban cigars. And we're slowly getting there. Well, Cuban cigars are not strong. Cuban cigars, it's the best tobacco in the world, is Cuban tobacco. And it has a natural inherent sweetness to it that we certainly, that's why we love using Honduran tobacco predominantly, is because it also has that, fermented correctly, has that lovely sweetness to that element to it. We're on a journey as well, and we'll be making cigars for years and years and years to come, and and, and hopefully our next one's going to be better than our last one. And, and uh, you know, this is a beautiful industry, and when you're doing it with great friends and with great clients, and you know, I'm looking forward to catching up all the Limassol people here tonight, because I, I'll go back to where I started. Their input in this journey is essential for us. and. I can't wait to do another sit down with you in, in, in five years or ten years and we, we play this back and see exactly how we've gone during that period of time. Yes, yes, uh, well said, well said, because we have no idea what's going to I mean, you're going to make another, some other cigars, but we have no idea what's going to happen uh, to the Cuban cigar market. No. And uh, at least we know that you guys are making good cigars. That's uh, the, the, the reality, and uh, at least there is hope. You know, for people who have uh, who, who are still looking for Cuban cigars, you go to your uh, local shops, you go online, and you also you can go to Bon Roberts and uh, and find the boxes you don't have because uh, always. I mean, I look at, I receive your, you know, the. The email usually a daily. I receive it every day. I think every two days, with a list of cigars. I always look at it. I always look because it's always exciting to see. What I've noticed, I don't know if if it's uh, um, if it's a, a true fact. A lot of people seem to sell y uh, young boxes, and and w w well because they were they they're hoping to make. Do you have cigar traders on the on the on the so, website? So the so the the rules on listing are are aged rare. Ah. Uh, so so something like a limited edition or a regional edition is 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 rare. It's only available in the market ah, that okay, it's been okay, launched okay. in. Oh, okay. Um, after that, a standard the standard portfolio it needs to have at least three years age oh, okay. before it can be listed. Okay. Um, so that's the the, the, the the where where Bond Roberts is 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 pitching uh, its its portfolio of, of, of which of, makes of, sense. Of you don't want a guy that gets out of your your shop and puts. Well, it there's straight no point away. in like no. w this isn't really as I say this isn't really about trying to compete with. Um, with the with the cigars that are that are available today, um, it's about um, about cigars that are difficult to find. It's about cigars that are that are, and that is either because they're geographically e exclusive, or because they're they've been aging um, in in people's collections. Okay. So that's why that's where that is pitched that that, that particular area. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Is there anything you want to uh, you want to add tonight? You you are going to start the uh, the party. Start the party. Yes. Um, so it's non-smoking inside. No, it is it's smoking inside. It is smoking inside. Yeah. So listen yeah. to that. There are still places in this world where you can t say that to uh, to an Irish man and an Australian guys. They shoot you in <laughs> Ireland, and in Australia they put you right in the middle of the desert, and you have to find your way back. You know. Much true. Yes. Yes. Imagine we are going to smoke. Uh, there are still places where where we can smoke. And that's uh, one of inside. the reasons. That's one of the reasons why we're here. The culture, the cigar culture in, yes. in Cyprus is very strong and the weather is nice and people are extremely nice here yes. yeah. and you have a lot of outdoor sitting which is also very good okay thank you very much and good luck this evening uh, i'm looking forward to uh, smoking the uh, 109 and not the petit 109 that's right I mean, in fact so i think we'll smoke both but yeah okay <laughs> good i will thank you very much okay. thanks a lot thank guys. You. thank you very